Chapter 9, Silent Warning George looked at Bess and said, You know perfectly well Nancy wouldn't give up the case. She's not a scaredy cat. Bess defended herself. It's not a matter of being scared. I think Nancy's in danger. As often happened, Nancy had to play the part of peacemaker between the cousins. Now she said, Probably you're both right. But I'm sure nothing is going to happen to any of us while eating in that Greek restaurant. It's a perfectly respectable part of town, even though it is old and some of the buildings are a bit shabby. And besides, George put in, I bet there's more than one Greek restaurant in town. The burglar has a choice. Oh, all right, Bess conceded. Next you'll be telling me there are zillions of Turkish restaurants there. As the girls rode along, conversation turned to the subject of the mannequin. Do you really think, George asked Nancy, that Farouk hid something in her, and that's the reason he wants her brought to Istanbul? Your guess is as good as mine, she answered. I admit I'm puzzled. If he did, George went on, why didn't Farouk take whatever it was with him? Yes, Nancy replied. And why would he ask my father to bring the mannequin to Istanbul? Why not have it sent? And why did he ask my father? Why not a relative or a close friend? George had an answer. You said Farouk left because he thought he was going to be indicted for smuggling and couldn't stand the disgrace. He would have traveled as lightly as possible, not taking any baggage at all from here. He probably planned to purchase new clothing in Canada before flying to Paris. Nancy smiled. George's reasoning made sense. She answered, I can only guess that he did not trust anyone except my dad. Bess had been listening without comment. Now she said, I have one great big why. Why did Farouk make everything so complicated? He sure must be scared of something or somebody. By this time, they had entered the narrow street where the Accursal Locanta was located. Nancy had to drive some distance up the block before she found a parking space. On the walk to the restaurant, the girls were intrigued by the foreign-looking shops along the way. Tall, narrow-necked coffee pots were among the many attractive objects made of brass. Bess especially liked the leather hassocks and large silk pillows to be used for sitting on the floor. She gave a little giggle. Don't let me loose here. I'll be spending more money than I can afford. Aren't the things yummy? George could not resist the temptation to tease her cousin. But think of all the work keeping that brass polished. The girls entered the restaurant and were assigned a table. The place was well filled and waiters were bustling around. When one came to take their order, all three girls said they would have grape leaves stuffed with meat and baklava for dessert. While Nancy was waiting, she looked around at the diners, wondering if any of them might be able to answer questions about Farouk or the Druze burglar. Presently, a short, stout man came from the kitchen and paused at her table. Smiling, he said, "'Pardon, miss, but I think I have seen your picture in the newspapers. Are you not Miss Nancy Drew, the detective?' "'Yes, I am,' Nancy replied modestly." She had noticed that people at nearby tables apparently had heard the question and were looking in her direction. She requested the man to sit down, saying she would like to ask him a few questions. These are my friends Bess Marvin and George Fain. The man bowed and replied he was Mr. Akurzel, owner of the restaurant. He said to Nancy, How can I help you? She told him they were looking for two people who, they thought, might be either Greek or Turkish. One is a young lady. She's beautiful and has big dark eyes and long black hair. The restaurant owner smiled. Most Greek and Turkish girls are beautiful. The other person, Nancy went on, is a young man in his early twenties. He has blue eyes, black hair, and a mustache and beard. Before Mr. Akurzel could reply, a man at a nearby table jumped up and came toward the table. He was about forty years of age, swarthy, and had narrowed eyelids. 
He began waving a fist at Nancy. Why are you asking all these questions? He demanded. Bess looked frightened, and George sat ready to take Nancy's part should there be any trouble. Nancy herself remained calm. Suppose you introduce yourself, she said coldly. The belligerent man stopped waving his fist and turned to the owner. If you tell these girls anything, you have me to reckon with, he shouted. Mr. Akurzel, looking very embarrassed and uncomfortable, arose. I must attend to something in the kitchen, he said hurriedly, and left the room. The swarthy man glared at the girls but said no more. He returned to his table and did not look in their direction again. George whispered, What was all that about? Nancy shrugged. She surmised that the obnoxious man was some kind of neighborhood boss. Having overheard that Nancy was a detective, he figured she might be snooping to find out something which he did not want known. Did he know the burglar? She would report the incident to Chief McGinnis. Bess said in a low voice, Let's get out of here. I'm sure we're perfectly safe, Nancy reassured her. Besides, we have already given special food orders. It wouldn't be fair to Mr. Akurzel to walk out. A few minutes later, the swinging doors to the kitchen opened, and their waiter returned, carrying a tray laden with chunks of Greek bread and bowls of yogurt. Bess was about to say she had not ordered this when the waiter said, The yogurt is compliments of the house. Make it special here. As the man went off, a smile crossed Bess's face. I guess the owner is trying to make up for what happened. She dipped her spoon into the yogurt and declared it was delicious. As soon as the girls finished eating it, the waiter brought in the plates of stuffed grape leaves. As he set Nancy's portion down in front of her, he unobtrusively dropped a note in her lap. She gave no sign that she had noticed it, but instantly spread the paper out on her lap and read it. There are many young people who answer your description, but you might look for two men, Samal Aga and Tune Eric, and girls, Alim Gersel and Aisha Hatun. Nancy was thrilled by these clues. Mr. Akurzel had undoubtedly written the note and told the waiter to pass it to her without anyone noticing. She slipped the message into her purse and began eating. The main dish was delicious, as well as the dessert which followed. Bess had never had baklava before, and was intrigued by the layers of flaky crust baked with honey and filled with chopped nuts. Absolutely divine, she said. Mr. Akurzel did not reappear in the dining room, no doubt because the unpleasant diner was still there. The girls paid their checks and rose to leave. As they passed the table where the man sat, he glowered at them. Nancy wondered if this was a silent warning to her to stay out of the area. But I'll come if I want to, she told herself. Nevertheless, Nancy decided to consult her father before hunting up the people named in the note. After the girls were in the car, she told them about her latest clues. That's great, said Bess. But I hope you're not going to start right now looking for them. Haven't we all had enough sleuthing for one day? Her cousin agreed. Nancy, I have a suggestion. You'll put your think machine out of business if you keep up this intense work. What say we get hold of Helen Archer and have a good game of tennis? Nancy had to admit that she had been pushing on the case since early morning and told the girls she thought it best to talk to her father anyway before continuing her search. Some sets of doubles sounds cool. Let's stop at a street phone and call Helen. She drove to the next corner, and George hopped out to make the call. Helen Corning had been married only a short time ago to Jim Archer. She had helped Nancy solve a few mysteries. George came back to report that Helen would meet them at the club. The girls went home to pick up their tennis gear, and within half an hour were batting practice balls back and forth over the net. Presently, they were playing in earnest. After four sets, with Bess and George winning two of them, and Nancy and Helen the other two, the four girls sat down to rest. The pretty brunette bride inquired what mystery Nancy was working on. When she heard about the mannequin, she said, 
Oh, I remember her well. Mother used to take me into Farouk Tamasp's shop once in a while. She loved Turkish rugs. We all wondered what became of him. She smiled broadly, then went on. So you're trying to find the mannequin now and take her to Istanbul. How exciting! Suddenly, Helen exclaimed, Nancy, I believe I know where the mannequin is! End of chapter 9